So, hello everyone. I'm Duncan Demacourt. I'm Eli Andrew. And I'm Sam Cowan. And we are three senior electrical engineering students at GW with uh, a combined total of over nine plus years of software and iOS development experience. Uh, and we are Shepard. Shepard is a m traffic management company that provides private venues with personalized driving instructions to their customers. <coughs> So we've all been in a situation at a stadium, sporting event, concert hall, or any other private venue where you're waiting in traffic for an extremely long amount of time. There's tons of cars around and not everybody has a clear understanding of where they're supposed to go. After waiting in what feels like hours of traffic and finding out where to go, uh, you finally uh, get to your destination. What this means is unhappy customers, and for the venue, these unhappy customers aren't going to be coming back in the future, and that means less money for you. So as a traffic management company, we're aiming to get people into and out of these venues as fast as possible. We also want to decrease confusion for the drivers by guiding them directly to their personal parking location within the venue. By taking into account the location of everybody at the venue, we're able to move people into and out of the venue as fast as possible. What this means is happier customers and ultimately, these customers wanting to return to the venue in the future, which is good for the venue. So from the perspective of the driver, um, the main value is essentially just the fact that you're getting into and out of the venue much faster. Um, so, so mitigating that time that you're spending, you, know, you can really enjoy the experience much more. And uh, here we have, a, we have a demonstration. It's just of a, of a driver on a public street using Shepard, and this could be tailored easily to a private venue. Um, and if you can just play the video. So you'll see as the driver approaches an intersection, he's given a, a red light to, it's telling them, do not proceed to the route, uh, stay while other cars are cleared from the intersection. And then eventually it, the light will go green, as you can see here. Proceed. And the driver is now free to proceed to their directed route. So eventually, the driver will be brought all the way to their final destination at the, at the event. And this will be happening for every car using the application at the event. So it should just provide an optimized uh, traffic scenario for, for all, all event goers. So the value to the venue is the increased customer satisfaction. The customers are spending less time in traffic, more time at the actual event. And instead of the negative experience they were having before, it's a more positive one. Additionally, the venue has more data information available to them. This allows for targeted advertising, as well as the, having a better understanding of what is going on throughout your area. So now I'm going to show a demonstration. And in this demonstration, you're going to see uh, cars going in and out of an intersection outside FedEx Field. On the left is the cars actually animating through the intersection. And on the right is the information available to the venue through our application. So go ahead. So on the left, you can see these cars going in the intersection, and they're given a color. And this color corresponds to the road that they're actually going to in the intersection. The, color, the cars that are colored green are the ones that are given the green indication light that you saw in the previous demonstration. The cars are going in and out of this intersection through our algorithms and our application in the most efficient way. So on the application side, the venue has a lot of information available to them. They have the street that the cars are coming from, indicated by the headers, the street that the cars are going to, as you can see next to the dot on the left, the wait time for that car in the intersection on the right, and then if they've been given the green indication light on the left that I just mentioned. So obviously a key component of all of this is getting good customer adoption. However, we feel we have a good solution to this problem. Initially, when uh, customers purchase their tickets, they'll be given a prompt on whether or not they'd be willing to use the application in exchange for some sort of incentive, such as closer parking to the stadium or some other stadium perk. So uh, we're going to use the information given to us from this prompt to decide how big we need the section at the venue to be for that given event. So on initial adoption, there'll be a small number of people who would be willing to use the application and so the shepherd section would look something like this. However, as more people start to use it and have a positive experience with the application, more people will be willing to use the application, and our shepherd section will continue to grow. 
Once it grows past a certain point, we're going to start charging the venue on a per car basis. Um, and then eventually what's going to happen is enough people will start to use the application that will have more like a full scale implementation as shown here, uh, which is better for the venue and better for the customers. So from the perspective of potential customers, we really just feel that any, any venue that has an enclosed parking area uh, would be a good fit for Shepard. So we feel like anything such as a, a sporting stadium that has a closed off parking area, or maybe even one of these government agencies that have some of these gated communities, we think that that would be a really good fit for Shepard. So as you can see up here in, in this graphic, this is just a, a, a parking image of the University of Phoenix, actually. Um, and you can see that the, the parking sections are kind of uh, segmented, as we had kind of, as Eli showed in the, the previous slide there. You could see that we could pr potentially just start in one of these small sections and then eventually grow to, to the whole area. And we have reached out to a few, um, a few venues in, in the DC area. Uh, currently, we haven't been able to get in contact with the operations team, but we do plan on continuing to push and, uh, and make, co make connections with some of, these, some of these venues. So the venue is purchasing the application, and what this application provides is the traffic management and parking management services. Additionally, as more customers begin to adopt the service, uh, they're going to be charged on a per car basis to the venue. The perks available to the venue are the targeted advertising that I mentioned, as well as a personal relationship with us. And that relationship is through a personal customer representative. This personal customer representative will be on site and will handle any and all problems that may arise as the venue begins to adopt our application. The drivers use this application for free. So one example market uh, that we could get into is that of large sports stadiums in the United States. There's over 200 of these stadiums with capacities from 20 to 100,000 people. Uh, based on current statistics, a stadium of around 70,000 people spends on average of $10 per car at their events. So what we've done is with these statistics, just calculated, this is not projected revenue, but revenue at different percentages of the market. So for example, at 1% of this particular market, which would be about three venues, we'd be making about $180,000 per year, and this is based on, an, on a venue having 10 events per year with an average of 10,000 people per event. So our initial motivation for this project, it actually came from our electrical engineering senior design project. Uh, so we had originally envisioned a, a system where we can just manage self-driving vehicles. So um, eventually in the future we see that there's going to be a, a large upward growth in the amount of self-driving cars on the road. And we need to find a system where we can have man-driven cars and self-driving vehicles coexisting in the same environment. So how do you do that? And we really think that Shepard could be a, a very, good, uh, very good way to do this. We think that we can provide a management system electronically as opposed to using stoplights and stop signs. Imagine a system, imagine a system in the future where we don't even need stop signs or we don't need stoplights. We can do this all electronically from the from the inside of your car, essentially. And this system could potentially even be built in into all vehicles. So on the, the, the dash panel of, of a vehicle. So obviously with this application comes a need to protect it. And a lot of the information that we are gathering in this application uh, is very valuable, especially as things become more connected going into the future. Uh, more companies are acquiring smaller companies nowadays based solely on that information that they provide. Uh, we believe that we have some trade secrets in that uh, our methodologies and our algorithms that we are developing are hard for other companies to copy and would be a barrier to entry for them. Additionally, we have spoken to a patent attorney and he believes that many aspects of our application could be protected through IP. So initially, we're going to be competing with tr uh, existing parking management companies such as uh, Park Ops, which takes a more traditional approach to parking management, brings people on site to manage your traffic for you, as well as other software based solutions such as Parking Boss, which provides uh, some handy little perks such as vehicle identification for the venues. Uh, in the future, however, we believe this idea is uh, going to be the main competition for other transportation companies. So, uh, like Uber and Waze, who may see the potential in our idea and want to get in on the market. However, uh, we anticipate being able to gain enough traction until that happens such that it would make more sense for these big companies to partner with us rather than to simply compete with us. 
And up here is our contact information, uh, our email, and our YouTube channel. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Appreciate it. We just have to move to so, the uh, Let's start here. So does your technology work underground? Sorry, what was the question? Does it work underground? Do you park in garages? So, underground. Yeah, yeah underground. underground. I always get lost in the parking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we were dealing with venues with uh, certain parking structures that had um, problems with GPS. We'd have to, on site, have certain things like uh, Bluetooth beacons that can help us with this issue. These are existing things uh, that are in place at a lot of these parking garages uh, already. So that would obviously hinder some of the GPS, but we could work around it. So as long as there's a connection in some capacity, we should be able to work around it. So questions. So I'm just trying to think of a use case, right? So I'm going to, say, Meriwether Post Pavilion or the uh, FedEx field, and I'm using either Waze or my Google Maps or my Apple Maps to get there. So would your app be an additional app that I would have to use? Uh, yes. Once I get that, once I get that, I have to switch it on? Yes, currently that's, that's what we're aiming for is to, once you get there, you would have to switch the application on. But yes, in, in the future, we have given some, some thought to maybe we could find a way to merge with a situation like Google Maps or Waze and, and be able to provide a system that's kind of universal where people drive into the stadium and don't need to switch to a new application. This, this also, it, it, it is like the same functionality as Waze and Google Maps. So you could just use the application from your house to the stadium. And it would begin giving you these directions once you enter right. into the stadium. Okay. So you wouldn't need to switch off necessarily. Right. So a couple of uh, just follow-up questions there. One is I think at least you know, that's going to be a big hurdle. How do you get people to use the app? Because everybody's right. OD'd and they're pretty comfortable with their GPSs. The second challenge I see just again from my limited experience going to these events in the life, and you have these people direct trying to direct people to the or even beforehand, right, you get this email saying go to parking lot C or parking lot D. But inevitably, not inevitably, but often enough, people land up the, at the venues and they know when and where to go, but they still keep trying to hack the system and see if they can get in closer. <laughs> so sure. how are you going to sort of overcome, the app might tell people where to go, but they're still keep trying to hack the system. Shock callers. <laughs> <laughs> so your first question was uh, more like how we're going to incentivize them to actually use our system right. and we talked about how we might talk to the venue about doing uh, closer parking or offering uh, coupons for vendors inside uh, depending on where they're actually parking at the stadium. Uh, so we feel that these might be incentive uh, enough for people to start adopting our system and then as other customers begin seeing satisf uh, satisfying results, they'll want to adopt it as well. And then, question, question about your development in iOS, which is what you talked about as being your expertise. Yeah. Um, there are more Android users than iOS users. Why did you choose iOS if you expect everybody attending the event to use it? We, it this was built as a prototype. Uh, yeah. we, we have experience with both. We decided for it made sense to build the application out from one side, but obviously for it to be viable, it needs to be built out on yeah. both platforms. We don't. This is not a hurdle for us. We can implement it on either phone. We just felt like it made sense to build the whole thing out on one phone right now. Yeah. No problem switching over to Android, is what no. you're saying. No. Yeah. Um, just a comment and then a question. Um, if you can get Dan Snyder to pay you for cars, <laughs> then I will be very impressed. Good, good luck to you guys. Uh, good presentation. Um, what we talked about the competitors, and, and and I mean, I don't know what doesn't let them just come in. You know, the barrier to entry they're already they're already there, right? Um, and and just take you off the map. That's my first question. I mean, what, what, other than your IP, which, which may, may well be your, your magic, um, your silver bullet, but I don't know what, you know, your competition seems to me that they would come in. If, if this actually caught on, they, they, they would they just kind of squish you like a bug or try to anyway, right? right? Um, so what's going to stop them from doing that? And then maybe I missed it, but how much money are you guys looking for? Yeah, so I, I guess to address the, the original question about competitors and everything, um, you see this sort of thing where someone like Waze, which is now a bigger company, was a smaller company, competing against people like 
Google, and what happened is they created this user experience where people didn't want to get rid of Waze for Google Maps. And so Google Maps, Google was forced to acquire them and keep them as a separate entity. So we see this as some sort of solution because we think our approach to this problem is unique and we can provide a certain user experience that is valuable. Um, that that's what we view as stopping these big companies from taking us over. And these big companies might not necessarily focus in this area until they see the success that we may have with this going forward. Right. Okay. How much money? So uh, we'd have to, to build, a, what's good about the business is it has very low cost. It's, it's mainly paying for software engineers and servers. Uh, obviously we'd have to build out more costs for employees because we do need some on-site people to help with issues. Um, I guess our, we don't have current financial projections of the amount we'd need for. Okay, that would be a good thing to yeah. nail down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, first of all, I got to commend you guys on tackling a very difficult subject. You know, here in a district where every traffic light is really, for the most part, a dumb traffic light and there's no technology. <laughs> right. And a few people know that the district has not retimed their, their traffic lights in the past 10 years for various traffic patterns. So I commend you for tackling such a difficult subject. But I was wondering if your business model is really should be an irritant type model because in the sense that if you're an irritant for a Waze or some of these other companies, that they'll acquire you to have this as, a, as an add-on to their solution seems to be one of the ways. Because the initial problem you were saying with Shepard is your universe of, of knowing, because you don't know, I'm assuming you don't know every vehicle that will be at that intersection. Is that correct? Well, uh, so, I mean, right now, as, as we had kind of discussed, it's anybody who's using the application. So right now, you, you don't, on a public road out there, you can't really make it so that everybody has the application. But we think that if we can, pro if we can prove this at a private venue, that it works. Or maybe such, such as something like uh, Naval Research Labs, where you have some of these gated communities. Yeah. Um, if we can prove that this system works, then eventually people can, can adopt it. Well, my point is, if you went with a Waze, you, you have a bigger universe right away, so you know more cars are at that intersection, and then your app, app right. will work better. I mean, you're really beholden to knowing right. what's the universe of vehicles out there at any one time at that intersection. So if you're an add-on to one of those apps now that car you know, captures better part of the information, I think the adoption rate for your technology would be quicker. That's why I say an irritant. If you're in such a way that they see they need to acquire you, right. um, yeah. you know, versus trying to compete directly, right. maybe the um, it's, it's definitely a viable option, is building this sort of functionality into their existing platforms. We've yeah. pretty much done that with Google Maps yeah. right now. Yeah. So, you have a so you, your value proposition talked about customer satisfaction being the driver. Yeah, How right. much does that work to a private venue? So in the limited conversations that we actually have had with venues, they have mentioned that the customer satisfaction is definitely one of the key aspects uh, of like how they implement the traffic management system. Right. We haven't gotten exact financial numbers on how so much they value it. To be able to build your financials, you could probably need to be able to quantify that, right? Yeah, exactly. It's one thing they'll tell you that now, but if you haven't asked them to pay for it yet, yeah. Yeah. that'll change their answer perhaps. Right. Well, you guys are, for a big venue, you're basically <laughs> trying to replace the people who are waving the flags and guiding traffic. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you can run the financial model against that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To see how many people are, uh, you know, doing that at a venue and how much they're making an hour. But I, th I think right. our, our main goal in the overall sense is just to, pr is to provide a system where people are happier. And by increasing their satisfaction, we can increase the, the likelihood that they'll come back to the yeah. venue. So yes, we maybe there is some mitigation in terms of cost from the traffic management having people on the ground, but our really our our main goal is to provide a system that increases customer satisfaction. But the, the people aren't paying you; the venues are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, it, it, have you guys? Uh, have any of you built out an app and? and Put it into the. Give me a little bit about your experience and your, you know, interfacing with uh, just, you know, customers or users. Yeah. So we we we're all like we said electrical engineers. So we have programming experience. Um, I've personally will like work professionally in this area. So 
I've experienced with that. Um, in terms of customer facing yeah. with applications, we've we've customer faced with with this application, so I had experience through that. Um, okay. What's your management structure? As far as like, it's uh, for the time being, it's just going to be uh, it's us three at the helm, and then I like, continue. So it's us three at the helm, and then we also are going to have the customer representatives underneath us, as well as maybe a couple other traffic uh, monitors. All right, so since we're out of time, who has business experience? Uh, not on the side of the business school, school. Yeah. but uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, quick. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.